Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and I am a graduate student in the Master of Biostatistics program here at Grand Valley. And today I will be talking to you about my research project which was assessing the relationship between storm event frequency and incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis in the state of Michigan. So for those of you who are not familiar with these illnesses, um, giardiasis Giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis are intestinal illnesses caused by pathogenic species of the parasites Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Both are characterized by a wide range of gastrointestinal symptoms, including diarrhea, stomach cramps, nausea, and malabsorption, leading to weight loss. Generally, these infections are not life-threatening, however, hospitalization um, can and does occur in severe illness particularly uh, prevalent in young children, older adults, and immunocompromised persons. In the United States and other modernized countries, even though we have um, advanced sanitation infrastructure, um, infections due to Giardia and Cryptosporidium continue to persist in our populations. It has been estimated that Giardia causes over 1.2 million illnesses in the United States each year, and, and cryptosporidium causes an estimated 748,000 each year. Um, particularly in the state of Michigan, we account for about 3% of the country's reported giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis cases each year. A common source of exposure for both giardia and cryptosporidium is through ingestion of drinking water or recreational water contaminated with parasitic organisms from the feces of infected humans of anim or animals. Previous studies have shown that there is a link between uh, increased periods of increased rainfall and runoff, particularly those following extreme weather events, and increased risk of exposure to parasites in general. So given that, the purpose of this study was to assess the relationship between storm event frequency and incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis specifically in the state of Michigan for the time period between 2013 and 2020. So prior to this analysis, we had two main hypotheses, hypotheses that we wanted to test. The first is that um, the, weekly storm, the weekly statewide incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis are temporally associated with storm event frequency such that periods of above average disease incidence are expected to be preceded by periods of above average storm event frequency. And then the second hypothesis that we had was that the annual countywide incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis are associated with the annual storm event frequency such that counties with an above average normal or number of annual storm events might be associated with above average disease incidence for both cryptosporidiosis and giardiasis. So the data used for this analysis came from a variety of sources. Um, weekly statewide uh, case counts for giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis were obtained from the CDC's National Notifiable Disease Surveillance System and annual case counts by each Michigan County were obtained from publicly available annual communicable disease surveillance reports published by the state of Michigan. Further, the uh, week weekly statewide incidence rates were calculated using annual state population estimates and the annual countywide incidence rates were calculated using annual county population estimates. Storm event data for the time period of the study was obtained from the National Oceanic and At Atmospheric Administration Storm Events Database, um, which basically maintains a record of uh, significant, intense, and severe weather phenomena reported by the National Weather Service. For this analysis, we were only interested in looking at storm events which occurred in above free freezing temperatures, and so these included events of types flash flood, flood, hail, heavy rain, and lakeshore flood. So in um, accordance with our first hypothesis, uh, studying that relationship between 
storm event frequency and weekly statewide incidents. Uh, we assess the relationship using time series analysis in which the strength and direction of the associations between disease incidence rates and storm event frequency um, was accomplished using the time-lagged cross-correlation between each of the time series plots. In addition, um, in testing our second hypothesis, um, which was assessing the relationship between storm event frequency and annual countywide incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis, we created choropleth maps and um, counties were colored using a diverging color scheme to identify those with storm event frequency and disease incidence rates in accordance with our second hypothesis, and particularly to identify counties which exhibited both an above average storm event frequency and an above average annual disease incidence rate. So getting to the results of this study, um, these first two figures show the cross time series plots for both the storm event count and the um, incidence of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis overall in the state of Michigan. So this goes, these counts go weekly from the uh, start of 2013 to the end of 2020. And the blue time series is the, the count of weekly reported National Weather Service storm events. And the red is the annual or weekly incidence of giardiasis in the state of Michigan. And then in figure two, same thing, except for the red is the weekly incidence of cryptosporidiosis. So from these plots, we were able to calculate the time lagged cross correlation. And what we found was that um, the cross correlation was the strongest between Giardia incidence and storm event frequency at a lag of negative eight weeks with a value of 0.189 and the strongest cross-correlation between cryptosporidiosis, cryptosporidiosis incidence and storm event frequency was observed at a lag of negative six weeks with a value of 0 0.28, 208. And basically these results indicate that weeks with above average number of storm events were weakly associated with above average incidence of cryptosporidiosis and giardiasis at six weeks later for cryptosporidiosis and eight weeks later for giardiasis. So this next figure, figure three, um, gives, a, gives an example of one of the chloropleth maps that we produced. However, we produced um, a, a choropleth map separate for each year and for each of the two diseases. So this is just an example of what was produced. But basically, the summary of the results for each of the choropleth maps is given in Table 1. So for each of these maps, we counted the number of counties in which um, a pattern was shown between storm annual storm event frequency and um, disease incidence that was in accordance with our second hypothesis, meaning that the, the the county exhibited either both above average Giardia incidence or cryptosporidiosis incidence and storm event frequency or below average for both of the measures, not a mismatch. So um, on average over all of the years that we looked um, excluding the year 2020, since we didn't really have very good incidence data for that year, we found that 53.4% of Michigan counties were consistent with our second hypothesis, and um, only 44.1% of counties were consistent with our second hypothesis for cryptosporidiosis incidents. Um, we did have a couple more interesting findings from this study. So we identified several Michigan counties which consistently exhibited both above average storm event frequency and giard giardiasis or cryptosporidiosis incidents across time. And these counties included Houghton, Marquette, Alger, and Delta counties. Um, which So these are all found in the Upper Peninsula 
highlighting an area that that probably should have some further comprehensive geographic investigation under undergone so if we look back to figure three if you look at the dark orange counties those are a lot of the counties that we found consistently had above average disease incidence rates and above average um, storm event frequency compared to the rest of the Michigan counties. Um, further, given the limitations of the methods and data used for this um, analysis, further research should be done that utilizes uh, multi-dimensional methods such as geographic information systems to provide a more robust assessment of the spatiotemporal relationships between precipitation geographic characteristics, and parasitic disease incidents. Um, and then here are my references. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. And thank you for listening.